What's up, besties and homies? It's your girl, Aisha, checking in back with another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome to Strong Friends Check-In Podcast. I think it's important to share my experiences and perspectives on dating and marriage because it's all a part of my self-love journey. I think that people tend to make assumptions about Black women and place stereotypes on Black women, particularly in the dating space. And I understand it because it's a part of human behavior to try to put people into boxes, to try to understand people because human beings are complex. I've noticed that people are blocking their blessings because they're making these assumptions and then making hasty decisions. I see a lot of people sort of throwing people away, ending relationships prematurely because they're not taking the time to really get to know people. They're just putting everybody in this box. And so I want to talk a little bit about my dating experience, particularly with the marriage proposals, to just give you a little bit more insight into my experience. Interestingly, the marriage rate is low in our community, yet marriage is a hot topic in dating spaces and Black media. It is a complex issue because there are so many layers to it. I share parts of my dating experience because I think it adds credibility to the message. I'm sure the title of this video is a little confusing. How can someone say no two and a half times? Well, I ended my engagement, turned down the second proposal, and that guy passed away a few years later, so I know I made the right decision. I spoke about that in another video, the video on abstinence. And I planned to marry someone when he returned from sea, but changed my mind. So it wasn't an official engagement, but we seriously discussed it. So that's the one half. As you can imagine, I have friends who thought I should have said yes. They were focused on money and benefits. And I understand that some women want to marry, but I want to marry the man that God has for me. That's the difference. I emphasize the importance of soul work, specifically the need to raise self-awareness to know exactly what you need in a man. This is important because many women are eager to get a ring. Some women express frustration about never receiving a ring. Others are still wrestling with trauma from a failed marriage. I think it's hard for some women to self-correct because they lack self-awareness. They haven't done the soul work. Some women are desperate to marry. Others know that they are destined to marry. Men assume that every woman is desperate for marriage. I talk about marriage because I value marriage. I'm excited about the legacy that my husband and I will create. That doesn't mean I want to marry you. An evolved woman knows who she is and what she needs. An evolved woman needs an evolved man. I said no because I need an evolved man. Okay, so what does that mean? See, ladies, when you've done your soul work, you know exactly what you need and how to define it. So I'll start with an evolved person because men are people. My definition of an evolved person is someone who is morally intelligent. They know that they are primarily a soul, not just a body. They are humane. They have compassion for humans and animals. They understand their humanity. They understand that humans have higher intellectual abilities than animals. So they don't compare themselves to wild animals. They understand the importance of exercising self-discipline and self-control and operating primarily from a place of reason and logic. They understand that they have a divine purpose. They have their own identity based on their core values, not cultural values, because cultural values change with the trends. Now, an evolved man has all of that and understands his divine calling as a man. He knows that he's naturally stronger than the average woman. He's more logical than the average woman. He was created to lead, protect, and provide because the woman is a weaker vessel. That is my definition of an alpha man. He would never try to conquer a woman because she is the weaker vessel. She's not his competition. She's not his enemy. She was created to compliment him, to help him build his empire. So warring with her is counterproductive and counterintuitive. I'd rather you try to seduce me than to try to conquer me. He knows leadership starts at home. That is his primary focus. As the leader, he sets his woman apart so that the world knows that she's not for the streets. He uses his authority to protect her from the world. 
When I see half-naked wives on social media, I know that they have weak, insecure men who care more about impressing other men than protecting their wives. Only a simp would allow his wife to prance around half-naked in public to get attention from other men. In my opinion, an alpha man would never marry a woman who'd do that. We're human, so my judgment could be off about a particular outfit, but I'd never embarrass my husband. He's a man of purpose. That means he has no time for pettiness. He must be humbly confident, not prideful, and humbly curious, unassuming, and ready to learn more about me, peeling back all of my layers and life in general. A man who is humbly curious has the ability to love all of me. He's genuinely interested in knowing me as a human being. He appreciates my complexity. He appreciates my sexy side, my nerdy side, my spirituality, my business mind, all of me. The problem is that men tend to make assumptions and decisions prematurely. They get too comfortable and allow arrogance to block their blessing. Notice I never said religious because I care about character, not religion. And notice how easy it is for me to describe exactly what I need in a man. Ladies, when you've done your soul work, you can stand firmly on your values because you know what you need. There is no question in your mind. You're not trying to meet the expectations of others. You're not seeking validation from men. You're simply living in your truth. I said no two and a half times because I'm living in my truth. The truth is I'm waiting for my Adam to awake. He was made for me. I'm not desperate to marry because I know I'm destined to marry. That is my message. Know that you are worthy. Know that you're loved. Please like, subscribe, and share. Until next time, it's your girl, Aisha, signing off.